Hello, I'm Councillor Martin Mullaney, uh, Councillor for Mosin and Kings Heath Ward in South Birmingham, uh, England, UK. Uh, today, uh, I'm here in Marcus Galleries in Mosley, uh, who sell graffiti art, and we're going to talk to one of the founders of the British art scene, uh, Rob Elliott. Rob, this is Rob Elliott, um, and he's been involved in the British graffiti art scene uh, since early 1980s. And what I want to do today, Rob, is um, get your reminiscences of the Graffiti Art Park. Weren't you one of the founders of the Graffiti Art Park, which is on the Bristol Road in Selly Oak behind Aldi? Um, yeah, I ended up in Selly Oak in 1988, working for Birmingham Youth Service. I'm a graffiti artist as well as a your, youth your name was Juice One Two Six. Yeah, my tag is Juice One Two Six, and I got basically I got a job. And yeah. My job was to to work with young people, but also as a side project was to reorganise the graffiti wall at Celia Art, right. Celia Oak. So, I mean, I started work there and yeah. just set it up as a gallery site. So, and how long was that a managed graffiti zone at Celia Oak? Um, the last events we did was in 1994, that under the auspices of sort of the council. Right, I mean, were the council paying you then? Um, the council were paying me as a youth worker to work with young people, but yeah. the free to side was something I did voluntarily, it was something I did, and so right. we all set up voluntarily. The city weren't going to pay me to work with young people paying graffiti. So, I mean, obviously uh, people would say, oh, hang on, you know, a legal graffiti zone, how does that work? Surely don't these kids go off? and paint and grip the park and then go and tag everywhere else. I mean, did they do that? Um, yes, tagging, tagging did continue, but, in, but there was quite a lot less of it at the time. Yeah. You know I mean, at the end of the day, we had walls to paint and because someone was, someone was working from within the city yeah. to, help, to help artists, we organised we organized events, we had paint, we had free deliveries of paint, and basically they had somewhere to paint and the, all, the painting always stayed on the wall, the park stayed clean. I mean, did you ever say to the kids, don't tag anywhere else? And yeah, you try, you try to say, you try to say to writers, please, you know what I mean, so I can hold it down a bit because it, you knew that whatever they did would affect, yeah. affect what went on at the City Oak, but you know what I mean, artists are artists, they're going to yeah. go out and tag. There's and not a problem with that, it's only when it's like, it's only when, it's, when it overspills. Yeah. Right, so, so when you ran City Oak, um, I mean, was it, because I've got to sell it out now, and it's, it's awful, it looks awful now. I mean, was it like that when you ran it? Or? Um, when when Selly Oak first started, yes, it was a mess, because yeah. Birmingham just had a graffiti wall. Um, this is 1988? Yeah, late 88, early yeah. 89. And basically, we just slowly cleaned the park up. Right. I mean, as the city did their end, we asked them to do certain things, yeah. and they did their So what, what kind of things were they doing? Um, we, just made, we just asked for, make sure there were bins in the park, make yeah. sure all the lighting worked, the flood lighting that worked. Yeah. Things like cut the grass on time, you know what I mean? Keep, yeah. the, keep the park groomed, you know yeah. what I mean? As far as if city don't like somewhere, they just don't do as much management. I mean, is it true that Banksy actually painted uh, um, the Yeah, we've had our visitors over the year. Yeah, so I mean, so didn't you have two festivals per year, graffiti? We, tr we tried between 1989 and 1994, we tried yeah. to have at least two festivals yeah. a year. One one would usually just be British only artists, yeah. friends would come and paint, and new artists would come and try something. We try and get as many artists to paint as possible, yeah. which is not a lot because we've only got so much space. And then one festival a year, we try to, after about 1990, we just try to bring someone with an international flavour here because it's arts worldwide, so yeah. you invite your friends from abroad. Right. So, I mean, and how important was, in the early 1990s, the Sully Old Graffiti Park, from a national point of view? From my point of view, there, there, there were a number of Hall of Fans at the time. The Sully Oak, for me, was my, my personal preeminent favourite, mainly because it's my own side, but also the simple fact that the work that was done at Sully Oak still lives and stands today. The artists that worked at Sully Oak, they went on to, a lot of them went on to bigger and better things. I mean, what kind of artists? I mean, are there any... Uh, um, there's nice call Ruff, his work is up and about, it's still all over England. Yeah. Also, part two, he's just had an exhibition a couple of weeks gone in London, yeah. and there's Stormy out in Australia, out in Perth, and yeah. another preeminent artist. We've also had people like John Wan, the late A1. Yeah. And we've, and we've had Sharp from New York, you know, in, 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 as, well as, uh, as well as putting on events with Mode. Right. So, oh, right. so, so all the people who painted there have gone on to better things, gone to be That's better people. things, they're already doing better things, yeah. but it's like Sally Oak was one of the stops, stops in their careers. Right. Yeah, yeah, and it was yeah. a good stop in the career because it's, I mean, the events were organised friends amongst friends, so you know, I mean, it's a family affair, turn up, paint, spend two or three days, yeah. it was nice. And should we go back, what, 
when it closed down? I mean, I mean, what happened? You know, because it sounds absolutely great. I mean, um, yeah, it worked. for us it was great. It was, but as, as I keep saying, it was the best kept secret mm. because it, because people did not even know it was there because it's an enclosed space. Yeah, yeah. And unless you enter the park, you don't actually know the wall exists. Yeah, yeah. Um, just '94, us and the city parted company. Me and Cries and the city parted company. Yeah. We tried, we kept things going for a couple of years, but slowly, slowly but surely our careers have taken us away from being involved in Sally Oak. Yeah. And things have slowly gone downhill. I mean, uh, I mean, would you say uh, the level of tagging in the city has got worse since it closed down? And, well, and would you attribute that maybe to Sally Oak Park being, being closed down as a... I, I can't say that that's the reason, but there are a lot more rises around now than there yeah. were in the mid 90s yeah. so you're going to have an exponential rise in the amount of tagging there is yeah um what Sandy Oak is a mess is a god awful mess um a lot of the younger writers don't see a, don't see a bigger vision mm. that's the, i'm not no disrespect to all these young artists yeah. but they don't see a bigger vision and until they see a bigger vision they're just yeah. going to be they're just going to be leaving a tag on the wall so so what you're saying is that with Sandy Oak Park they had someone who could sort of say, look, you know, by tagging you're upsetting people, don't do it, and, you know. Um, it's not so much upsetting people, and it's just like, there are bigger and better things than just writing your name 50 times on the same wall. Yeah. And some of the younger artists can see that, that, see that there is a future, that you can make money from it. Maybe they don't want to make money from it, maybe they just want to scroll their name on the wall. But well, mm. please don't do it on the walls of, a, walls of one of the few graffiti art galleries in the world. Sally Oak is still here. Yeah. All, the, all, most, all, but, most, all but about one Hall of Fame in England have started right about the same time as Sally Oak are mm. gone. They're just gone because right. the city had enough of just like all, all out vandalism and they just either taken them away, yeah. built on them, just got rid of them. Just, just so I mean, you don't like, do you like tagging? Do you like yeah, tagging? I love tagging, man. No, no, nothing like a freshly good painted tag yeah. in a nice obscure place that, that, that illuminates the wall. But I mean, but I mean so, you know, when you see someone who's done tagged down on the street bins, on the wall, and you can see 30 of them, what, what's your thoughts? Um, well, it only needs one, uh, um, younger writers today feel that more is best. Yeah. Um, one, well placed tag by, by writer is all that's needed, but what, what most people don't realise is that there are lots of ones, lots of ones tags on, on, on a bin, on a street corner, because there are a lot more artists, so that it seems more prevalent, it is more prevalent, mm -hmm. and, and this, you're not going to get away from me. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, a well done tag is beautiful, it's an art form in itself, yeah. but sometimes it can be done in the wrong place. and. Yeah. Some of the younger artists need to realise that, that sometimes there's a wrong place to do a tag and sometimes there's a right place to do a tag. Right. And on the walls of your gallery, it's not the place, yeah. except on the corner of your painting. Yeah. And the, your painting should fill the space. But obviously someone's uh, brick wall down the bottom of the, bottom of the row, I mean... Um, you're, gonna get, you're, got, you're going to get it. Some areas you prefer it not to be in, yeah. and you don't do. Some areas you will find it in. I mean, um, I mean would you prefer to see Sally Oak Park, Graffiti Park? Remanaged again, and um, yeah, it needs to be remanaged. At the end of the day, you know, what I mean, when we were there and it was managed, yeah. and and we had something to do, the vandalism was lower. But also, you know, what I mean, it meant that we could organise events and have things happen in Birmingham. I mean, do you think that if we had it reopened and managed, that it would help be one of the tools to reduce the level of? graffiti tagging across the city? Um, it would probably help. You know what I mean? if, if writers have got somewhere to go and express themselves as artists, um, they can express themselves as artists, it may mean that the, the level of tagging goes down. Um, I'm not going to guarantee the, I'm yeah. not saying guarantee it's going to, but all I, all I will say is that while Sunny Oak was running, yeah. there was very little vandalism going on in the city because we had somewhere where you could go yeah. and paint and there are a lot of better things to do than tagging all the time. I mean, do you have any concerns about um, tagging Postcodes up, yeah. Um, that's a new thing. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm 41 years old, so you know what I mean. It's a generational thing. Um, that's something that seems to be appearing. But it'd be a, it'd be a shame if it was uh, as sort of territorial markings, because you know I mean, people want to be able to travel and paint wherever. And if people can start marking their territory yeah. through their through their postcodes, it's a bad thing for the art form. You know what I mean? Because like, you just want to be able to travel and paint. You don't want to be th feel that you're infringing on another man's territory. Okay, well, I think our time's up now, Rob. That's brilliant. Can I thank you once again? Uh, that's Rob Elliott, one of the founders of the British graffiti art scene here in Birmingham in Moseley. Thank you.